Oh yeah, 100%. UK diva Steph Landon didn't blink when asked if there's a link between hardcore drill and dancehall music on one hand and crime and violence on the other. But poverty and neglect to blame, she says, not DJs. I mean, if you're going to talk about murder and killing, you, that, you know, I know people are talking about what they see, what they live. And you know how I feel about music? I feel like when the people at the top start speaking about how, you know, dance halls influence in violence, I feel like what makes them want to sing about violence in the first place? I like to get to the root of the problem. I feel like that's, that's almost, you know, near enough the end of the problem. That's the results of something that's going on. So I feel like we need to tap into why are they singing about that? What's the reason they're experiencing stuff like that? And why do they feel like... They want to mention these stuff. Why do people like to hear these things? Is that a big discussion in the UK, though? Is it something that preoccupies the wider society? Is it tackled a lot in media? I mean, yeah, there's been a there's been a time like not too long ago where, you know, I think the government, they said they're cracking down on drill songs and they're going to use it as evidence in court, like the stuff they say. And, you know, a lot of people don't agree with that because sometimes people sing for entertainment and they might sing about someone else's story. And you know how it goes in music. People want to have the hardest bars, the most deadliest bars, and they might not even be telling the truth. So when they say they want to use that against them, I think it's happening even now in Atlanta with the, the thug situation. A lot of people are not for it. And I'm not for it either to use that as evidence against people because some people are using it generally to entertain because they think this is what people want to hear. Here in Jamaica, society grappling with but failing to contain ever higher levels of violent crime, much of which is reflected in graphic lyrics and music videos. I mean, like I said, I don't think the songs are the issue. I think there's an issue before the songs, and I think you need to tackle the issue before the songs. Like, you know, when I come to places like these, I don't really see the government doing much. You know, I see a, a bunch of rubbish on the side of the road and I see it, you know, it's like, where is the where is the care for the people? And if you don't show people that you care about them, they might not care about themselves, you know, as much. For example, in England, we have so many benefits. We don't pay for health care, you know. There is benefits. So in England, when you have a baby, for example, the government will give you money and help you, you know, contribute to, to your living. You know, in Jamaica, they don't have that. So you have to kind of fend for yourself. And then the wages also are very low. And there's a reason why the wages are low, which creates situations like these, where people come from where they come from, people feel like they have to do certain things they don't really want to do to get by, and then they start singing about it. So like I said, the, the problem stems from the root, which is not music. Music is the effect after, you know what I'm saying? It's what they use to then speak about their living conditions. And you come to communities like this in inner city Kingston, what strikes you? I mean, what is your emotional reaction looking around and seeing the lives that people live? And they've been living lives like this for a very long time. I would see garbage on the floor. And to me, in, in England, you would never see that. And I feel like they deserve, a be they deserve better living conditions, like by the government themselves. They deserve better living conditions, like the street. They deserve to have clean streets, clean water. You know what I mean? A good home and a good wage. I think that's most important because a lot of people don't want to work because they're not even getting paid enough for their work. No problem, no problem. No problem, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think like Afrobeats, dancehall could do with a little bit of a uh, different kind of messaging? Uh, isn't that a part of Afrobeats' wider appeal right now? Right. A lot of Jamaicans were, were just in this dancehall, dancehall, and this is what we want to hear. But some people don't realize that the outside world, because I've been a part of like, you know, the African community, I could see a different side. So I see that when, when I'm on that side, a lot of those people wouldn't listen to slap music. They wouldn't. So when you do a lot of slap music, you automatically cancel your audience. You, you shrink your audience. Even though a lot of people love slap music, we all love slap music, but there's a, there's a, there's a side where, you know, grown people like Af in African community, they don't listen to that type of stuff. So I guess with the Afro beat, anyone could listen to it, which is the difference. Like it's not a selection. It's like anybody, kids, aunties, you know, uncles, granddads, moms, dads, and I think, with Jamaicans, maybe we should do maybe a slack version and a, a nice clean version, but a very nice one, you know, not just a boring clean one. Because, you know, you don't like the, the clean version, don't really sound too good, but you want 
How about we just go with a clean version? No slack versions, just a clean one sometimes, sometimes. Moments. Moments like these. Shy, baby, tell me what you want from me. And talking about massacre. So don't be on the fence for this one. Who is the baddest artist in Jamaica right now? The baddest? Who you say massacre? You like massacre? Who's the baddest? Who do you say, sis? Who the baddest? Massacre? Who do you say massacre? They said massacre, so it's massacre. And I'm looking straight at you and directing the question at you. Me say massacre to them. If them say massacre, me say massacre. Yeah. And skilly for me too, though. Who next? I got a song with um, Baker. He's doing really well, by the way. His songs on TikTok, I hear them all the time. Some people gave Shensia a tough time for tempering her sound for an American audience. How was it for you navigating the music scene in the UK? What somebody told me the other day is, you cannot buy culture. So when you come from when you when you come from something, you own it and you put it forth to the world because there could never be another Shensia that that is from I don't know that's from Poland. Do you get what I'm saying? There can never be another Steph London that's from China and do Jamaican music and say that because you're not, you're just not that, so you couldn't do it, and the world just has to accept it. The difference is now. Social media gives everyone a voice to say something. Whereas before you couldn't really say, you couldn't really talk directly to an artist. Now you, now everyone has opinions, but I feel like as an artist, if she feels like she wants to try something, it's fine, she's alive. So even if she could try it and it doesn't work, she could try something else. And if that don't work, she could try something else because she's an artist that sits in the studio and I'm sure is gonna make 100 more songs. So if you don't like that, I'm sure she's gonna come with something you, you, you do like, even though people, you know, some people like it, some people don't. That's just how music works. Same with me. I love Shensia and I, she's a young woman doing her thing. And one thing with me, I respect um, young women doing their thing because I know how hard it is, especially a young mother. So me and her are both young mothers. And you know, I know she lost her mom, which must be so difficult. So I do feel like people sometimes give her a hard time, but I don't, I don't even look at that negative stuff because people also really love her. So that's the stuff I look at. She's very much loved, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, if she wants to experiment with her sound a little bit, she she should be allowed to. She's the artist. You know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And being in the entertainment business, and you know, it's a highly sexualized business, yes, and you, have a, like you have a particular image. You know, is that a little weird for you with your son, Jalen? My son doesn't have a phone, so he's all right. You know, he ain't, he No phone, phone for him. No, he don't have a phone. Let me tell you something. The only thing I've done that I feel like, ooh, I don't want him to see this, is my recent freestyle with Funk Flex. Me not turn up in a box seat. Wife, if it life, it's a Benz and a taxi. Real star, any woman step, they my pop me. Steph done, pun any rhythm, you know what crime scene. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want him to see this. So sometimes when I played it in the house, I have to turn down the volume. <laughs> I don't want him to hear that. But everything else is kind of cool. He knows his entertainment. He knows his mommy. And mommy's last project before leaving the island, a combo with Cartel called not unexpectedly amazing on Donwell's PlayStation Rhythm. I won't play you like a video game. You live in my dream. A picture your friend, not that she's checked this. You want exist for me. Yeah, you, yeah, we if you fulfill with destiny. Them are nobody, them are relevant. That's how the thing made me deal with it. Wicked. Yes, Jamaica right now. We're in Denham Town with the family. Come on, everybody. Come on. Come on at the camera light. Video light. Come on. Hi. Come on, kiddies. What are we going to say? Where are the ones in Jamaica? Where are the ones Three million people here, and the whole world knows who Jamaican people are. So big up this time. Yeah. As long as we keep um, bringing good music, so we need some nice, some more reggae, I think. A little bit more, little bit more reggae. Oh, yeah. But yeah, man, we're good.